Hello and welcome back. Today we're gonna do an explanation video on installation procedure and functionality of TIG Performance rear brake ducts for the AMG GT series. So just as in front we have a common setup, so carbon ceramic uh, brake rotor, heat shield and a massive gap in between those two. In the previous video we have already explained how this design makes a negative effect on cooling performance. So the mounting procedure starts with brake caliper removal. We have already made all the components loose in order to make this video shorter. And after the caliper the brake disc is removed. Now we'll have a close look at the backside of the rotor. As you can see, uh, this is the inlet area of the rotor where it's supposed to suck the air in in order to ventilate. On the opposite side we have the aluminum heat shield which covers all of that area. That effectively prevents uh, most of the fresh air coming in from the wheelhouse area or underneath the car to properly feed the rotor. What happens instead is the hot air which is exhausted out of the wings. Some of that air of course comes out uh, through the wheel to the exterior but some of the air is actually sucked back around the rotor through that gap in between the heat shield and the rotor and thus being recirculated through the rotor. So it's clear that at that point when you have the hot air coming back in the intake uh, you lose the cooling performance and that leads to the system failure in the end. Moving on with the installation we have to remove the original heat shield. Uh, there have been numerous questions whether this part needs to be altered or not in order to install uh, the ticked performance ducts and answer is no. Uh, ticked ducts are complete replacement parts so you just take the original heat shield away. I also want to point out this area here uh, which covers the caliper and you will see later on how that particular feature is uh, solved in ticked performance duct. So, now that we've removed the original heat shield, let's have a look at the Tick Performance uh, duct assembly. Uh, this is what it's gonna look like when installed into the car and it consists out of two pieces. So, we have this heat shield air guide and we have the duct itself. Uh, the installation procedure is uh, plain and simple. So we use the original bolts and attachment points to install this heat shield. Uh, the difference between this one and the original one is uh, material and shape basically. So original one is made out of aluminum and it has those uh, stamped shapes to keep it rigid but they also create that gap between the shield. In Tick Performance one, you have this uh, base plate made in stainless steel, and as you can see, we have the air guide welded. That guide also, apart from keeping the part rigid, closes the gap between the rotor. Uh, effectively, what it does is it creates an air passage, so like a closed channel all around the wheel hub in order to feed the entire parameter of the rotor. Apart from that, as you can see, we have these banded pieces which also help rigidity and uh, reflect the heat away from the critical suspension components. As for the duct itself, um, you can see it's a high quality, lightweight carbon fiber piece. We have these car uh, carbon Kevlar reinforcements in the impact areas and we also have the uh, heat reflecting texelium fibers impregnated in the laminate in order to uh, help keep the heat away. Uh, as for the attachment, it's established by uh, two points. One, which uses the uh, anti-roll bar link. And second, you have this attachment via original heat shield attachment point. Uh, in order to install it, we simply remove 
the link, put the duct in place and reinstall the link. And secondly, we have this bolt here. Again, uh, I would say very simple installation procedure. Uh, everything is bolt on and a tight fit. Uh, tight fit is also very important to prevent that hot air recirculation. Uh, looking at the duct itself, you can see where the inlet is positioned, so under the car floor. Uh, it's of course uh, way too low at this point because of the suspension is down, uh, but the duct itself travels together with the suspension to keep the proper ground clearance and avoid any contact. Uh, so, the air is sucked through there and guided this way. Uh, I would like to say that uh, this duct doesn't supply uh, the rotor only in this area, but uh, instead the heat shield is used as a channel to feed the entire parameter of the rotor. Another key feature is uh, this part here and we've said that already. So with the original one, you have this piece which covers uh, the caliper and basically prevents uh, a lot of air of coming into the caliper, whereas the performance one has this feature uh, specifically made for cooling the caliper. And you could now see here uh, with the caliper empty and without the rotor where that air supply is. So we feed the fresh air directly in between uh, the caliper piston and the rest of the caliper. Uh, now we'll put the rotor in place. And we're also going to put the caliper back in. Now, with all the components in place, let's have a look from the back side. Uh, and as you can see, the gap between the rotor and the heat shield is very close. So about two and a half millimeters. Also, in this area between uh, the duct and the rotor, also duct and the caliper, so very tight fit, which ultimately prevents the hot air recirculation and combined with a forced air induction from underneath uh, makes very good cooling performance. Um, I hope this video helped and thanks for watching. I hope to see you on the racetrack. Bye!